Okay. Um, I'm an ex-player. I've been coaching since I was 16, 17 with some club teams just to get a good feel for it. And when I stopped playing at 27, I realized how much passion and love I had for the game. I didn't want to get out of it as an athlete. So I became a coach. And all the experience that I've had throughout my years of playing, I put it into my coaching career as well. So what I've learned, mistakes I made. And what I did was I compiled all that information, put it in the storage department. Mm -hmm. which is my head, and I started training and teaching kids the right way to play the game, and that's how we came up with Pure Touch Soccer Academy. That's awesome. So, so tell us a bit about your business then. What, what does your company specialize in? We specialize in private technical training. We don't work on big numbers as some of the clubs do, some of the academies do. It's all about numbers. Numbers equals tons of I don't know about profits, but lots of money. We specialize, we charge a higher price, a higher premium, but we specialize in small group training like a private school. What we'll do is that we'll have maybe, our ratio is between one instructor for every six to eight students. So that way they get the highest learning, technical development they could possibly get. A lot of these other institutions, what they'll do is they'll have two coaches for 60 kids and they charge a fortune. So that's the difference between what I'm doing versus what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. I never had teams through my academy, but what I did was I started an ID camp series where I picked top players in certain age groups and we traveled to Europe and our first trip, trip was to Portugal mm -hmm. and we played three exhibition games. We won all three and that's how we build the success of these athletes because I expose them to different parts of the world if they're interested. And I also expose top players to universities in the U.S. if they're looking for a scholarship based on their videos, based on their training development. And I hope to get these players all my goal, my rule of thumb in my academy is to get these players to the next level. Fantastic. So you, you've been coaching for, for a long Since time now? Uh, 16 30, 32, 33 years, wow. give or take. I'm, 40, I'm 49, turning 50 this year. I've been training like for a long time, but it's not just any training. What I do, Leonardo, is that I grab a player mm -hmm. and I find out what their deficiencies are, what their assets are, what they're, what they're good at, what they're weak at, and I work on their weaknesses as opposed to focus on their strengths. Mm -hmm. And in order to get them better, let's say, for instance, I'll give you an example. If somebody comes in and says, okay, I'm a right footer, fantastic, I'll assess them. First thing I do with any new player, I assess them. Mm -hmm. And I take a look to see what, what their deficiencies are. And I work on more of the deficiencies, but I always go back to their strengths. The reason being is because their strengths, it's always something that they're going to go back to during the game. Yeah. Even though you're working on their weaknesses, their weaknesses will come into play once confidence builds. So you got to repeat that weakness over and over and over so that way they could execute it in the game or practice and get comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Love that. So what does, what does a, a high-quality coaching session look like then? For a team or individual? For an individual. Uh, what I do is I start off with some ball, some skills, different types of dribbling, mm -hmm. using one foot, other foot, both feet, rolls, toe taps, duck walks. I call it duck walks, but it's TikTok in between the feet. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is I see the progression of the player, how they're developing in the session. And if I find that they're developing quick, I'll take it to another level. So mm -hmm. what I do is called progression stages. I start very basic. I assess them with the basics. And then after I turn them into somewhat intermediary, which is a little bit higher grade, if I see that they're doing good, and then I step it up as high as I can. If I see that they have the potential and the drive and the passion to continue doing the high skill drills. And eventually we build it up to a 1v1. Faint to shoot, giving goals, what, what their footwork is like. And then I break down their whole component of their body, their foot, how it's, how it's got bones on it. I focus like based on like the structure of the player. 
-hmm. Like if they're not opening up their hips and their arms open up the hips to release the strike, I need to fix that. If they're not hitting it with the toe bone, a shot, low, high, mm -hmm. I fix that. If passing is big passing with the right technique, it's all technique. If they're not, I want to correct that. And if they're listening to what I'm telling them, they'll see the progression really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So I break every indiv individual up as an individual. I don't paint everybody with the same brush. Mm -hmm. So somebody will say to me, Ange, I want my kid to shoot like so-and-so on TV. Well, do you know that so-and-so on TV has been practicing every day for the last 20 years? Mm -hmm. Do you know that they're professionals for a reason? Do you know that they're dedicated to the sport that they love? Do you know that so-and-so and so-and-so? And when you break it down for these parents, I said, listen, not for anything, but if your kid wants it, I could teach it. Not a problem. If your kid's just going to waste my time, your time, and everybody else's time in between, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say, listen, not for anything, but, but your kid might not want to be here, but I want to teach it. But if they want to be here, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Because save your money, with all due respect, I don't chase money. I chase dreams. Mm -hmm. The kid wants it. I send them to where they need to go. And we develop together as a unit. And when they get to where they need to go, I take the credit for it along with them. We work as a partnership. And then after we take it from there. So I'll give you an example. I have mm -hmm. eight, nine players that play in Europe that live there. And they all came from my training academy, I call it. Not my team academy. I don't have teams. Training academy, which means that we work together. We work on their weaknesses. I know what the European clubs are looking for, for this kid to succeed. So 99.9% .9 of the time when I send the kids to Europe, they don't come back. Because we check off all the boxes. That's what makes me unique in what I do. So therefore, all these kids that say, wait a second, I see so-and-so made it, but they weren't that good. I make them as good as they can be and want to be. I get into their psyche of the head and I start fixing this as opposed to the body and the feet. Once they understand the psyche of the game, because every game's got a psyche, they can develop better and faster because they'll visualize it, they'll see it, and they'll execute it. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Love that. So what, what, what do you look for when you bring on a new client then? What, what are a couple of traits you look for in a player? A player comes to me, I've never worked with them. Say, for instance, you came to me, say, Angela, I want to get better. I'm a striker. Um, okay. I play at this level. I always ask them what level you play at. Okay, good. Highest level. Does it matter? I don't think so. But the quality of the player, the passion that they have, do they love the game or do they like the game? If they love the game, it's like anything else. When you love something, you're going to listen. You're going you're, you're gonna to try to execute. You're going to ask questions, and we're going to work together. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I look at is when they come in, the first thing I do is ask them to dribble. Just dribble. Grab a ball, dribble somewhere. Change. Use your left. Use your right. Use both. Lay down some pylons. Have them dribble through there. What's their body posture like? What's their, what is their foot? Are they stiff when they dribble? You know what I mean? Are they, do they look unathletic, athletic? Like what, what's the situation? Everything gets registered in my head because like I said before, I don't paint every player with the same brush. Just because yeah. you come in, somebody, somebody else might, might be different. They might have good feet, but no head. Some people have good head and no feet slow. Mm -hmm. So there's so many variables that I look for in a player. And I'm able, I don't know how I'm able to do this, but maybe tons of experience from when I played all over the world with regards to what are you trying to accomplish when you play? Are you trying to become that distributor? Do you like to score goals? What makes you happy as a player? Mm -hmm. Do you like to compete? Do you like to communicate? Do you like to um, just stand there on the field with, with no success, you're not moving, you're not speaking, you're not doing this. There's two things you can't teach from what I've learned in my experience is you, you can't teach height. It's either you got it or you don't if they're looking for that. And you can't teach passion. It's either you got it or you don't. If you have those two things, it doesn't matter about the height, but it matters about the passion because the passion is more important than the height depending on how you play the game. Mm -hmm. If you're physical, play physical. Don't mm -hmm. change your pattern of playing because you see everybody else say, hey, we all want to be Ronaldo, Neymar, or uh, Lionel Messi. 
No, there's only three, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else is part of the rest of the pack. So I tell these guys, who's your favorite player? They'll bring up somebody. And I'm like, do you want to be like them? And they're like, yeah, I'd love to. And I said, why be like them when you could be you? Yeah. Like, why do you have to be somebody else that you can't be? Because you're living in a country like Canada, US, or wherever. You got mm -hmm. more opportunity where you're from, England, because mm -hmm. it's a professional and it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Right? So over here, mm -hmm. I say, wait a second. What are your goals? I want to play. Uh, I want to get a scholarship. Okay, so let's focus on that route. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on making you eligible, good enough to get a scholarship your, with your grades, with your ability to, le to learn and listen, with your ability to train hard, work hard, with your ability to speak. And we'll find that route. Mm -hmm. What's your goal? Oh, my goal is to play in Europe. That's a different lifestyle. That's a different game because I played in Europe. And at the end of the day, you can't play the North American style in Europe because there's two different methodologies and philosophies about the game. That's why a lot of people struggle when they went to Europe because European soccer is totally different with the movement, communication, and everything. And they got what's called patterns of playing. Mm -hmm. And in North America, I just came back from Florida, and I've seen some of the top U19 teams play in Florida in the Walt Disney Cup, the showcase. And uh, I wasn't impressed, to be honest with you. Like, I was not impressed. The top teams in the, in the state, in the country that were there, because it's a different game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's not my style. But for some people, Leonardo, at the end of the day, it depends on what you're used to. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm more like the European style. For me to play in the U.S., I could do it, but it's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. For me mm -hmm. to play in Italy, I adjust a lot better. Mm -hmm. That's my style. Mm -hmm. Playing movement, first touch, second touch. So that's just my philosophy and how the player. First thing I ask is, where do you want to go going forward? Oh, I want to play. There's, we have different leagues here. OPDL is supposedly the highest league here. It's called OPDL. Okay. So you want to make an OPDL team. Perfect. What's your position? My mm -hmm. position is whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know your roles in that position? They're like, no. I said, well, every position has a role. Mm -hmm. Simplify it, right? Trying to make it easier for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what do you want to work on? Are you allowed to do this? Are you allowed to do this? Or are you restricted from doing A, B, and C? Because every coach is different. Yeah. Well, I, I have the freedom to do this. Perfect. You have the freedom. First thing you need to do is this. And then I go through the steps of what you need to do in that position. They're saying to me, Ange, but how do you know all these positions? I said, it's a very simple game. Every sport is simple. If you make it simple, if you're the playmaker, make plays. Mm -hmm. If you like to score goals, if you're not scoring goals as a striker, you ain't going to last too long. You need to score mm -hmm. goals. If you're mm -hmm. a goalkeeper, save the ball. Mm -hmm. If you're wingbacks, attack on the flanks. Mm -hmm. If you're a creator, plot. if you're a false nine, like whatever your position is, there's rules for them. But they were mm -hmm. never taught that. Mm -hmm. So I become, I become that person to teach them what they need to learn to succeed in this particular sport. Mm -hmm. So I simplify things for them the best way that I can so that way they're happier, they're more confident, they want to play more, they want the ball more, and at the end of the day, they get scouted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do with these players. So every kid to me in, my, in, in Pure Touch Soccer Academy is a project. Mm -hmm. I could turn a bad player into an excellent player just by controlling the mind of their mind because they're, they don't play. They get discouraged. They lose confidence and they don't want to play anymore because it's not fun anymore. So mm -hmm. I make it fun for them. Those are the type of players, Leonardo, that if you actually take anybody, doesn't matter what color, what, whatever. And you say to them, listen, we're all special. We have certain skills that we are great at. And once you find out what that skill is, take advantage of it. Mm. It doesn't have to be sport. It could be you being brilliant in business. It could be you be, being brilliant and selling something like cars or real estate, whatever it is. We're all talented in something. And I said, if this is something you want to do in love, you came to the right place because I'm going to create you to be that person. And when they become it, everyone was like, how the hell did you do it with so-and-so that didn't want to play? Well, the problem is, is because... Clubs in general, we all know, 
they paint everybody with the same brush because they don't have time to train that kid individually to make them better. So they come to people like myself and say, Angelo, I heard so many great things about the academy, what you've done with so-and-so. So you build what's called a resume for yourself. That's how I started. I built, the, I built a brand that when somebody comes to me, I'll make them better a thousand percent because that's my goal. And if I don't make them better, I fail. Mm -hmm. So I put the pressure on me because I care about it so much and I have so much passion to make people better that it's almost like an obsession to say, okay, you know what? I need to, I need to make this kid great. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're making anybody great. You're turning them into a human being that loves doing something over and over. That's it. Yeah, completely agree. Completely agree. So let me take you back, Angelo, when you first started Pure Touch Soccer then. What, yeah. what was a few challenges you faced? Getting your name out there, getting credibility, getting the clients, getting uh, uh, fields to train on, um, getting confidence from the people that you played with or against, because they'll always say, oh, did you hear Angelo started an academy? So my goal right from the get-go was to put my name and my product out there. So what I did was I started off with a mini can. I wasn't working throughout the years because I had a full-time job, but I started off with a mini camp in the summer, one week to see how many students like it. We promoted it with flyers. We brought it to schools. We dropped them off. We said, listen, if you're interested, here are the flyers. Give us a call. Send us an email. We'll answer any of the questions that you have. So it was me and a partner that I had at the time. And what ended up happening was we got good success based on, we had the first class, first week, we had about 14 kids. Second class, they liked the first week so much. They told friends, we ended up with 18 kids. And we only did a two week camp in the summer. So we like, you know what? This was successful enough to put our brand out there. But the biggest problem when you start a new business, you could lose it just as fast as you built it. Okay? Because the first reaction the first response from the customers consumers if they give you a bad rep to say it's not worth it you're finished but they never said that because we i never personally spent a lot of money on advertising my advertising is word of mouth a referral from joe peter mike hello angelo my name is so-and-so because i got your number from so-and-so one of your students i'm like okay so you know already something's going wrong and I've been building it ever since from 2004 till today. But the only thing that hurt a lot of small businesses like myself, you know what it is, pandemic. Mm -hmm. Facilities were shut down. Nobody wanted to stand next to each other. People had to wear masks. Like it was a mess over here. I don't know how it was over there in England, but mm -hmm. it was a complete mm -hmm. mess. So all the facilities were closed. They were working with limited numbers. And for me, limited numbers means one thing, breaking even. I don't work to break even. I got a family to feed. I got a wife and two kids. I need to create money for what I love to do to feed my family and to pay me for what I love to do. Simple. Why do people go to work? Money. No matter how you slice it or dice it, I cannot work for free for the rest of my life because when the bills come in or something else comes in, a birthday, a gift, a, a confirmation, a wedding, whatever, you can't go there and say, here, I'm giving you me because I got no money. Mm -hmm. So number one thing, I don't care what anybody says, you got to do what you got to do. You got to have a passion for it. And money will come a thousand percent. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody says. I speak what I believe. If the kid comes up to me and says, hey, my kid is great. No, he's not. He needs a lot of work. I'm not saying that because I want you as a client, but the reason why you're with me, because you know he needs work, right? A lot of people are like that. They mm -hmm. say, my kid's the best in this age group. Well, let me be the decision maker. I'll decide how good your kid is because I would love for your kid to be great and take it to the next level so that way we both win in the end. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, way, the way I do it is I interview the parent first and foremost before the kid because the parent will de determine or tell me how the kid is going to be. So... The parent, what do you think of your kid? I start with the same thing. I question them. What do you think about your kid? 
oh, my kid's got tons of potential. He's A, B, C, and D. Okay, fantastic. Talk to the kid. I don't care how old the kid is. I speak to the kid. Eight, nine, 10, six, seven, doesn't matter what the age is. And then I assess and I question them to say, what do you want to do? First thing I say is, what do you want to do with your life? Besides education, health, that's number one. Uh, I want to be a professional soccer player. Where? Uh, I want to play in Italy. I want to play in France. I want to play in England. Good. Um, do you play with the ball every day, even on your own? Uh, they'll say yes or no. So once now I have an idea of what I'm getting into. Because if a kid says, yeah, I like to play with the ball every single day, fantastic. Mm -hmm. That for me is gratifying to the point where we meet, we start training, and then from there, we build the brand together. Mm -hmm. And that we try to get them to the next level. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. Love that. Love that. So where, where, where do you see private training going in Canada in the next two to five years? Leonardo, I'm going to tell you something. Soccer is not our number one sport. It's ice hockey. Okay? I played ice hockey too. The highest level you could think of. I was a better hockey player than soccer player. But because I made the Canadian national team at 15, and I played all the way to U21, U22, I had no time to play hockey. So in hockey, the bottom line is this. The reason why players become who they become, because there's 5,000 hockey schools in the GTA, Greater Toronto Area. And no coach, no organization will ever deter somebody, a player, from not getting better. Never. The kid can't skate, go see uh, Leonardo. The kid can't shoot, go see Angelo. The kid can't whatever, uh, can't skate, uh, uh, shoot, hit, go see Peter. Like we always send them to the right people. Yeah. The best technical trainer is so-and-so. We promote that. But over here, they don't promote it. Because they see that they're not doing a great job, but they're getting paid from the club. The kids want to get better to pursue their dreams. So they come to people like me. The clubs get upset because they come to people like me because when they go back, they're better than everybody else. They get upset because their name gets, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's tarnished? Let's say that. Okay, oh, your name gets tarnished. Oh, where did you get better? Oh, I went to so and so. I went to uh, Peter Peter's clinic. I went to this. Oh no 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 no! You can't go there. You you know what I mean? Like it's an ego thing. And I'm saying to myself, but not for anything. But if the kid's better for your team, mm -hmm. it makes you look better as a coach because you're winning more games. What's the issue? Yeah. But in hockey, it's totally opposite. They push people to go to these academies, these training clinics, these skating this power skating, the hitting, the shooting, the passing. We promoted it because we have no time to develop little Johnny. Mm -hmm. We don't. Because we're running a tactical session based on power play, based mm -hmm. on what? Based on what's our, what's our methodology of playing? 4-3-3, 3-5-2, 4-2-3-1. Uh, like, what is it? Every team is different, mm -hmm. right? So we... They don't promote the individual. They don't understand a lot of things that's going on with regards to when you go on a trial. Did you play soccer? Yeah. Okay, Leonardo, you go to a trial. You don't know anybody there. Who mm -hmm. are you supposed to make look good? Yourself or the team? Yourself. Of course. It's an individual thing, right? Yeah. Once you make the team, you become part of a team, and that's mm -hmm. when you build up your technical tactical. Because mm -hmm. you're part of a team now. But when yeah. you're showcasing yourself, you don't want to make everybody else look good. They get picked and you don't. Yeah. And that's why I developed these kids to be mm -hmm. the best at these trials, these ID camps, because you're building the individual, but you're still reminding them that once you make it, you're not an individual anymore. You're part mm -hmm. of a group. You're part of a team. You win as a team, you lose as a team. But be the difference maker when you win and lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want trying to instill in their head to say, hey, you're still playing for a team, but you got to look after you, which yeah. is you, one. And if you don't, mm -hmm. you want to look after everybody else and they get all the success and you don't, mm, now you're making a mistake. Yeah. So I became a consultant as well. So they could always phone me. Mm -hmm. say, Angela, I'm playing over here in Florida and struggling in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And I'll help them. I'll help them. Mm -hmm. It's only a little phone call to say, Angela, what am I doing in this situation? 
So I discussed with them. I said, give me the scenario. And I put it on a piece of paper because everything I have is on pieces of paper. So every drill I've ever made, like I got about 5,000 drills. I made them from the top of my head. Yeah. Which yeah. is not normal because a lot of people go to YouTube, they get a drill and they just execute it. Mm-hmm. There's five pounds. This way. I don't do that. Mm-hmm. I've never done it because I'm so obsessed with becoming the elite of the elite trainer in the world mm-hmm. that I need to go above and beyond everybody else. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 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 So when I, train, when I train these kids, I train them to do things on their own in a situation mm-hmm. when they're on the field. Mm-hmm. That's my goal for my academy, and it's always been. And the people want to knock it and say, they do it out of jealousy, I think. I don't know. But it doesn't bother me because you see the success. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So what would you say to, to another coach, either watching this or listening to, to this interview, who want to, to start a business but are maybe afraid to do so? What would you be your number one advice to them? You got to have the passion to do it. You got to take the, pe- the players. Okay, so this, this question's always been asked. They're like, Angela, what do you do with players that aren't very good? I said, well, you call yourself Joe's Training Academy uh, Development Program because they started from stage one, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. They said, okay. They said, how about if they start getting better? I said, well, you've done your job. How about their coach and you want to start something like what I'm doing? What do you do? First of all, you got to see if it's for you. So you got to try it. Because not who's one of the best players in the world, Maravana, Beckham, Zidane, all those guys, not all of them make good coaches because they can't explain to the players what they can do. So that becomes a little bit of a, uh, you know, what? how can't you do this? Well, I'm not you. Because they're all, they're all painted. The top players in the world, they're so fixated on everybody else's success that they say, how come you can't jump? How come you can't do that dunk I did? How come you can't dribble through nine players and score like you did against England? How come you guys can't do that? Coach, we can't. Now what happens? Now you've lost your trust. Mm-hmm. Because you're painting everybody as the same brush that you're using. So you're painting everybody with the same brush. But at the end of the day, you can never be successful that way. The reason being is because to be successful, you got to recreate them. Okay? So as a coach, I'm an ex-player. have a passion for teaching, passion for – or do you have the passion for the money? Which one is it? Because when you have a passion for something, believe you me when I say this, money will come. You don't need to sell yourself. Because it's going to show in what you do, how you develop them, how you speak to them. What do you get out of them? Do you let the kid fool around? Do you let coaching and teaching and training is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. They think it is. That's why you see 5,000 academies. Oh, I got ABC. When I started in 2004, there was me plus five academies in the GTA. Now there's 180. You know how many of those 180 are successful? One, 12. They all left, went on their own, and they went belly up in a year. Because they thought, but if I'm with Angelo, I'm going to do what he does. And people are going to come. It doesn't work like that. Because you need the passion to do it. Mm-hmm. You're just going to say, oh, by the way, uh, I see Donald Trump and I see all these wealthy guys and they're worth billions. I want to be like it. You can't be like them. Everybody's, we're all created differently. Mm-hmm. And when these guys try it and fail, they'll come back to me looking for a job again. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, guys, you want to do it, you do it. But do you have the passion to do it? Do you have the patience to break down the kid's ability to kick a ball or pass a ball? Do you have the ability to do that? Or do you get frustrated? Do you leave? Do you, like, what's, your, what's your story? Mm-hmm. It's, what I'm telling everybody to do at the end of the day is do what you think you're best at, whether it's assistant coach, whether it's a trainer, whether it's physical whether it's uh, speed training, are you good at that? Whether, whatever you're good at, focus on it and you will never fail. Mm-hmm. A coach who plays, doesn't mean he could coach. Yeah. But, and, you know, so-and-so scored. I don't care what he scored because at the end of the day, can you teach how you score? Mm-hmm. Can you demonstrate to show them that they could do it too? 
Not everybody could do that because they don't even know what they're doing. They just do it. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a human being, you know, I don't know if I'm boring you or not, but a human being mm-hmm. at the end of the day is broken down into quadrants. Okay, just like the field. Mm-hmm. You got feet, you got thighs, you got chest, you got shoulders, you got head, you got neck. You know what I mean? Like you got hips, be mobile. But at the same time, you got to do what? Mm-hmm. Execute. Mm-hmm. And when you execute, what happens? People start knocking on the door. Who's your kid? Yes. What's going on over here? How- they, yeah. they start to take notice. Of course, because you're selling yourself as a brand. You're a brand. Yes. My father always said to me, he goes, Ange, buddy, forget about everybody else. Your last name is your brand. Yes. yes. Do you want to be known as the mm-hmm. who's who of the best? Yeah, of course. That. So that's your brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm-hmm. some people say, but I don't have a brand. Yeah, your brand is your name. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do bad things? Your brand. And your and you want your brand to take the wrath of everything that you did negatively? Like you want people to know you as the greatest or the worst? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you want to take that route to the worst, mm-hmm. that's your brand. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what I like to teach these kids because there's people that don't necessarily become pro players, but they become very successful business people. Individuals. They're yeah. like, Ange, I'll never forget what you told me. I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? They're like, I never forget that time when we were training and you said, guys, this, you cannot fight to be the second best. You got to be the best or don't participate. Nobody remembers number two. Mm-hmm. And these guys all graduated from universities. They all built like apps. They all built financial industries, like, and they're mm-hmm. like, they thank me. I'm like, what are you thanking me for? You know, you don't even play soccer anymore. Mm-hmm. It's the rules, what you teach us, that is so important in life. Because the mm-hmm. rules that you taught us mm-hmm. can't be can't be rewritten to the point where you told us to do this, but you didn't tell us to do this because it benefited you. You told us to do this because it benefited my brain yeah. to tell me why I'm doing it. I'm like, oh, and I I get teary-eyed when I do it. When they come up to me and give me a hug, say thank you, I'm like, whoa. Like, for me, it's like, oh, that's special. Mm -hmm. Not soccer players, but they succeed in everything else they do. Then I got the players that became successful playing in Europe. So that made their journey the most successful to what they wanted in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I don't know know how to explain Leonardo, but I'm just, I'm different. I'm different because I have too much passion for what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you're you're developing people. Yes, exactly. You know, soccer soccer is just something the person does. A by, yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's no, a by, I love it's a byproduct. Byproduct. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. So, so tell us a bit about how did you get your first client then? First client. Yeah. How did you get your first client? Like I said, we. We solicited at the camp in mm-hmm. 2004, the summer, mm-hmm. and we solic- solicited through what's called uh, the jurisdiction of where you want to hold the camp. So say, for instance, mm-hmm. we're, holding, we're holding it in a certain area called uh, Vaughan, Ontario. Yeah. Which, which is uh, Maple, which is within the city of Vaughan. Then there's another Concord, which is in the city of Vaughan. So we decided to do it in Maple, in the city of Vaughan, and we handed out our brochures in packages to all these schools in the surrounding area. And people would call and say, hi, how are you? I'm interested in the camp. And at first, we had to open it up to the general public because we wanted more volume than quality, quantity versus quality, just to get our name out there. And we ended up with 12 kids. Is it good? And they got 1,000 flyers? Not really. But at the end of the day, it's a good start. So now that we're doing this camp, now we got to prove to them and the parents who we are and what we do. And that first kid specifically, I don't remember who it was, but I got a photo of six kids that came to the camp. They're all playing professional now. Wow. Yeah, which is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever done something like that in their life. One's in uh, Benfica, one's in Holland, one's in two players in Spain, one's in TFC Toronto, one's in, uh, what's the other one? One's in Norway, one's in, like, there's so many. And you think to yourself, like, these kids started when they were four or five. That's how young they were, some of them. 
Some of them were eight and nine. It was a very young group of talent. The parents were there. So they were interviewing us just like we were interviewing the kids. They want to, some of them knew me personally from when I played. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, let's see what, how Ange could teach the game and what he's going to do with my kid. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is that you make them better. And the word of mouth comes around and they say, if you want to develop, go see this guy. You want to develop, go see that. So when they call me now, like I already know that they're calling on a referral. So-and-so asked me to call you because my kid needs this. Now they're getting very specific because they know I specialize in what I do when it comes to soccer. Can I coach? A thousand percent. I won many coaches of the year because now it changed my mindset to tactical. Mm -hmm. I want to see the movement with the players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's different training methods between coaching tactically versus technically. It's mm -hmm. hard to do both. Very hard to do both. That's why when I separated myself from the rest of the pack, I became a technical expert in training mm -hmm. and breaking the player down, rebuilding them, making them a superstar that they can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was my goal from a technical mm -hmm. perspective. Love that. So wh where do you see your business in the next five years from now then? With all due respect, if this pandemic didn't hit, I would not have had any glitches whatsoever. Mm. Based on, because my goal throughout 12 months in, over here in Canada is you do six months outdoor, six months indoor due to the weather. Mm -hmm. fall, went, fall, winter, you can't train outside, it's cold, it's freezing. It's, so I go indoor to outdoor. And it's been very, very successful for many, many years until the pandemic hit. Facilities were shut down. I couldn't train more than 10 kids at a time, especially in the indoor years with fall, winter of 2020, 2021. It destroyed a lot of businesses. It didn't just destroy mine based on the fact that I was still doing private, semi-private school training, team training in the spring, summer. So I had to work every day, four sessions a day, seven days a week for six months. That's how I made up the difference in costs and revenue. Because mm -hmm. if you had to rely on facilities, especially in this country, to make money during the pandemic, a lot of people lost everything mm -hmm. because they're not available. People get sued. You get tickets for having one extra player on the field. Like it's very stringent to the point where they didn't want you to succeed as a small business. Mm -hmm. And it was frustrating for guys like myself because we built a brand for all these years since 2004. And all of a sudden they take it away from you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, okay. Now what do you do? That's why I ended up going to Florida with my family because if I'm not going to work here, I'm going to go to Florida where there's no restrictions really. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different mindset. I have to change my game plan. But now that I'm back home, like I'm so busy right now, every single day. But the problem I'm having right now is the climate change and it's, it's still snowing in Toronto. Now, what do you do? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's always, it's not yeah. consistent here. So yeah. therefore, what the people are telling me upstairs is that, hey, yeah, it's not for anything, but like, what do you want to do with this situation? Because you've enjoyed Florida. I got a lot of connections there. Are you going to go there for six months? Come back for six months? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. So that's the crossroads I'm at right now, right? So as mm -hmm. a business owner, I got to sit back, spoke to my wife, and I said, what can we do? How are we going to do it? Now, the business plan has changed. Yeah. Now, I need to adjust the new business plan, which is how are we going to make this work? Mm -hmm. for, the benef for the benefit of the students, benefit of the parents, for the benefit of me and my business. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. Excellent. Well, Angelo, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to, to share your story. I can obviously tell you're very passionate about what you do. So I want to encourage you to continue to do it. Because I know you're you're changing lives and you're making a difference to, to the clients you work with. So if any coach is watching and they're inspired by by you, by your story, by your business, how can they get in contact with you? And how the can they follow your business? Touch soccer on Instagram. 
I only have my Pure Touch website on my phone, but it mm -hmm. shut it down on my uh, computer okay. because, of, because of the pandemic. So when you're paying hosting fees for no reason and nobody could register on it because we had nothing to do, mm -hmm. I, told every, I told everybody, we told all our clients that we were going to take emails mm -hmm. to my director email th account and we're going to do Instagram or personal messages. And that's the way. And then what I do is I do a schedule. Okay. If they want to get a hold of me, tell them to message me. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I could help them, I'll help them. There's no issues with that. Perfect. Awesome. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll add your, your Instagram link to the, to the bottom of this video. So any coach can reach out to you or follow your, your business. Perfect. There. Perfect. All right. It's been an absolute pleasure, Angelo. Good luck with everything in the future. And I hope no, to thanks for having me. Thanks you're, for having me. You're very welcome. I hope to connect with you again uh, soon, very soon. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you, Leonardo.